you are better off with a good level degree than a poor degree and some exemptions. When deciding which degree I should do on going to university, the advice I was given was take a degree you enjoy as you're better off with a good level of degree than a poor degree and some exemptions. I still provide that advice to others if I'm asked. You're far more likely to do well at something you enjoy. Another piece of advice I would give you is to concentrate on getting the best degree you can rather than just going to as many milk rounds as you can to try and get a job despite all the doom and gloom that is around about getting a job at the moment. Because if you spend all of your final year at university going to job interviews, you'll get your job offer, and then your degree will fall down, and they'll reverse the offer because you haven't got a good enough degree. If there is still a recession at the end of this year, who knows what will happen even if you've got a job offer. If the recession is over, and I think it is over for actuaries, everybody will need more actuaries, and then there won't be a problem getting a job. Uh, which is part of the reason we have chosen to try and have this careers event out of season, because all the companies that didn't recruit last September because they didn't think they'd need actuaries, we're hoping will have found by now that they need them. So, what can you expect? Actuaries work across diverse industries. And actuaries also often work closely with senior people from other professions or organizations. So we're back to this communication skills thing. With their specialist training and unique skills, they are behind many high-level strategic decisions made by financial service companies and governments. And with variety comes flexibility. So you could have the opportunity to work part-time, abroad, or from home, allowing you to adapt your work pattern to suit your lifestyle. Actuarial is also one of the most transferable of professional qualifications. So, for example, if you want, if once you're qualified, if you wanted to go to Canada and you've been working as a general insurance actuary, no problem you would be able to immediately join the, the Casualty Actuarial Society. There are not many qualifications like that. If you were a French qualified actuary and you came over here and you wanted to become a UK qualified actuary, then I believe you would only have to pass one exam and have a couple of years working here. Is Jenny here? Is, is that correct? I think so, yeah. Yeah, and I think that there is room for manoeuvre with the transfer of European qualifications for the, to the UK, but it, it's not that difficult. But you do, with all these things, because they change from day to day almost, you have to consult the Institute. And Jenny, do you want to stand up so they know who you are? <laughs> <laughs> you thought you were going to escape, didn't you? Yes. Okay. The UK has two professional bodies, the Faculty of Actuaries in Scotland and the Institute of Actuaries in England. Now, there are many pathways to becoming an actuary, and the most common is, or I thought it was, but it, things, these things do change, is through self-study, where you get study leave from um, your workplace and can, you know, study the, the um, papers and you study whilst you work. Employers will give you study leave and <coughs> practical experience is necessary to qualify as an actuary. But the reason why I hesitated when I said it was the most common method is that more and more degrees, more and more prestigious universities are giving actuarial degrees which give exemptions. Now, in theory, this should make it quicker to qualify. 
But my personal view is that students with exemptions should be given the first year that they are in an office without taking exams in order to integrate and gain experience and learn the jargon rather than tr imagine that they can immediately fast track through the um, later exams. Once they've had that year to, um, oh gosh, I can't think what the word is. In, no, integrate's not quite the word, but to gain experience in the office, then they can fast track through. Um, it's not officially possible to qualify straight from the university, but let me tell you an anecdote that I know Jenny won't like. Um, when I was in um, South Africa, and they were just <coughs> introducing the exemptions from the South African um, colleges at, in Johannesburg, Bits, and in Cape Town, UCT, they did not allow both of the, they would not allow anybody to give exemptions that would let you qualify. They were one exam short on each. But in the, in the profession's wisdom, it was not the same exam short at both universities. So being in the audience, I put my little paw up and I said, oh, but can't they just hop on a plane and take the course at the other university? And the person who was giving the lecture and talking about these wonderful new exemptions said, oh, no, nobody would do that. And the peals of laughter in the audience meant, oh, yes, they would. <laughs> so I don't know if anyone actually has, but in theory, it is possible. Now, going back to this international qualification, the actuarial profession is the first to have a single global qualification, and it's called CIRA, Chartered <coughs> Enterprise Risk Actuary. Enterprise risk management has really only come into its own in the last year or 18 months, and it is fascinating. Um, and a lot of the recent crises occurred because financial enterprises, financial institutions didn't have good enterprise risk management. And actuaries really are the best people, when you think of what the qualification contains, to be involved in enterprise risk management. CIRA is an opportunity for actuaries to go back to the centre of how businesses are run rather than just being pure math specialists while still being able to use um, their appreciation of maths. And it's an excellent pathway to becoming a CEO or a chair of a company. The imperial pathway is, is the MSc in actuarial finance. And in my opinion, it combines the benefit of the university route and the um, studying on your own route. Um, but I'll let Tony, I think, Tony is much better at these things than me. He'll, he'll talk to you because he's the program director of the course and he'll talk to you about it, and he'll also talk to you about enterprise risk management. And certainly, I hope that you will all qualify one day, and if you do, if you haven't registered with my company, then phone me up and I will drink a glass of champagne to you because there is nothing nicer than that feeling when you go to the institute and you get presented with your um, diploma as being a qualified actuary and suddenly your life is your own and you can stop doing this study, study, study. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have finished like that. Maybe it sounds something you don't want to do, but believe me, it's worth it. <laughs> okay. Right, uh, Tony, over to you.